everyone to another episode of Rick's Gadgets. Today, going to do a review on the Google Home Hub. Not going to do the typical unboxing and type review, how to set it up. I'm going to focus on the home automation aspect of it. Some of the things you can and can't do as it relates to my system, which is a home seer, or some of the other systems. So stick around. So you're going to start out on your tablet or smartphone and you're going to open up the Google Home application and it's going to look like this. And from here we're going to pick on, make sure you're on the home and not, you know, one of the other settings, but you're on the home. And you're going to do add and we're going to do setup device. And here we want to link our home seer account with our Google account. So you're going to click on the link services and in here you'll have to go down and you'll just find your home seer or if you have smart uh, Samsung the different type of uh, connectors you want to use and here I already have the home seer link services and this will require your my home seer login account I've discussed that in prior videos so once you type in your my home seer account it's going to go out and discover all of your devices that you have configured in home seer for the voice control and that is it for setting it up and getting your devices into the google home hub now let's switch over to the device itself and look at how you can arrange and control your devices what you want to do is when you just touch the screen it'll bring it up and you'll just do a pull down from the top and this will show you your lights you can go by view rooms and in here you can see the den and there's the den light that I added you can turn them on turn off master bedroom and then the others in our home now you cannot add these to a room from the, the hub that's one drawback you've got to use your app for that so to set up your locations and add the the various components of your light system you have to be in the app here and, and what you want to do is when you bring up your interface and you go to your lights um, you can come in here and you could just open up the one and then at the bottom it will give you the option to add to a room so we can choose the home or we can add another home but I'm going to choose my home next and I'm going to add this one to our bedroom and next and what Google Home is doing here is basically it is grouping your devices so you can tell um, for example den lights to come on and it'll turn on all your lights within the the den group the same way with the bedroom or you can do individual ones so to customize it you're gonna have to be here in the app to do it you can't do it from the hub um, but you do want to go in and take your devices and group them um, and another thing is uh, you cannot unless you have them defined as the sliders they will not show the brightness of the lights so you know you can turn them all on or off here based on whatever group you have so you can turn all your dim lights on and off but the slider will not work unless you have dimming lights um, the one thing that would be nice on this you can use um, like I said the graphical you can also use the hey Google turn den lights on okay turning four lights on and there it turned on all the lights that I have grouped in um, this is nice um, but the one drawback is uh, you know doing the touch screen is everybody's gone you know with voice that you're kind of going back in, st in time and using actual buttons to turn lights off and on. Uh, this was the one thing my wife kind of complained about when I told her I wanted to get one of these 
was the fact that she said, I've got to go back and go back to touching buttons. And I just like saying the, the phrase and letting it do uh, turn off and on the lights. So, you know, that that's one drawback. You know, I don't know how much you would use the actual touch screen because it's easier just to say it and go in here and do it than having to come in and swipe down, tap on the lights, and then go to the specific ones. So it's not much of a time saver. So you're not gonna get much out of that by using the hub. So that's one drawback. Um, but I mean, overall, it is nice having this here in the kitchen. Uh, you can bring it up and look at videos on it. You can see here, you can have your upcoming appointments and you can just have a slideshow of, of different pictures. Um, and you can also come up with top stories, you know, music, YouTube videos. So overall, it's pretty neat. Um, I don't think I would use it or rely on it much for a home automation system, just for the simple fact that it, it doesn't give you all the features that, you know, just the voice control gives you. Um, it would be nice if they would open up the interface and allow uh, home sear touch to be installed like the app and have the app up all the time because that gives you a lot more information and as far as controlling the lights um, just by the touch of a button and not have to go through so many swipes so anyway that's just my quick video here on the 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 hub here and how it relates to home automation you know you can get by with less this is nice having the screen but for me, uh, I mean, I will use this, but I would prefer just having the Echo Dot or, you know, just the, just the regular old uh, Google Hub and not the, the display here, just to use my voice control. It makes it a lot easier because, like I said, we're going back to the days of tapping buttons and getting your lights to come off and on. The whole thing is to make it simplified. And just having to go through the extra steps to me is not worth it when you start looking at this type of device. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick video here on the Google Home Hub. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks and have a great day.